I could sit here and tell you that GNU Libre.js is an amazing project that everybody should go and run, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. Honestly, I think it's a bit of a joke project, but I did cover J Shelter recently, so I figured I should cover this as well. And while I do think that Libre.js has some interesting goals, I don't think those goals are really achievable in the way the modern web actually works. And if you want to just use Libre.js as a script blocker, there are much better tools you can be going with. So what is Libre.js, you might be asking. Well, Libre.js is a JavaScript blocker made for Firefox-based browsers. But what criteria does it actually block on? You can probably work it out by the fact that it's a GNU project. What it does is any JavaScript that isn't trivial JavaScript, basically if you're setting a variable or like calling a function, things that are so simple that you can't really license them, or if they are free JavaScript, and anything that's not that is going to be blocked. Free JavaScript is JavaScript defined as free by the Free Software Foundation. For better or worse, the modern web is built on JavaScript, so there's not really any productive way you can just flat out block all JavaScript. I know some people try to live like that, but it just breaks way too many websites. So this doesn't block everything, it just blocks most things, because as you might expect, a lot of the web is built on JavaScript that hasn't actually been licensed or is licensed under a proprietary license. For example, this is about as far as you get on YouTube. Some other websites do actually work. Wikipedia, for example, does have a text-only mode and will work perfectly fine without JavaScript. And surprisingly, I didn't expect this, um, Google? actually works like completely fine no problem whatsoever it does have a uh, bit of an old looking search but it functions but there is one saving grace for this extension and that is the fact that a lot of the web is built on top of javascript libraries and the vast majority of JavaScript libraries, especially the important ones, are licensed under either an open source or, in many cases, a free software license. Now, if this just broke JavaScript and just broke a bunch of websites, it wouldn't really be that useful because every time you came across a site that didn't work, you would have to go up to the extension, go and disable the extension, and then re-enable the extension, which sort of defeats the entire purpose of actually using it. So what you can do instead is if you click on the extension, it'll tell you how each of the scripts have actually been categorized. So there is a white list, an accepted list, a block list, and a black list. So the accepted and the block list, those are going to be done automatically based on what the uh, the extension can actually determine about the scripts. If it is non-trivial or if it isn't free software, it is going to go in the block list. And if it is trivial or if it is free software, it's going to be in the accepted list. As for the white list and the black list, those are going to be things you actually set yourself. So if you see a script in here where you're like, okay, this isn't actually that bad. I want to go and whitelist this. Then you can go and click on that, and that will move into the whitelist. But before you do that, you probably should go and click on the show option to see what the script is actually doing. I have no idea what this is doing, so I don't know if it's bad or not. And then as you go on whitelist scripts, you can then go and reload the page and see if the page is actually working now after you've gone and done that. I actually don't know how much I would need to whitelist to actually get YouTube to work. I know it's not everything, but it's certainly a... Uh, a good portion of these scripts. But sometimes you won't just trust individual scripts, you trust an entire website and trust that even though it's not using free software, it's still not going to be doing any privacy violations or anything like that. In which case, what you can do is click on whitelist on the entire site, and then basically it's gonna be like the extension is disabled and everything on this domain is now actually going to work. From my experience, unless you're specifically going out of your way to find websites that use free software or only use trivial JavaScript or no JavaScript, you're going to have a really rough time actually using this extension. Most websites I go to end up just basically being broken, especially any of the major websites, because a lot of the major websites really don't care about free JavaScript. So if that's something you can live with, hey, go and run this, that's fine, but 
otherwise, as I said, there is a better choice we'll go with, and I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Now, you can also go and control the blacklist and the whitelist inside of the extension itself, rather than going to the individual websites and modify them in here. Plus, you have the option of going and having a default email set up to go and send to the uh, the website's maintainer. Um... Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure I'm sure that sending an email like this is certainly going to make them change. I'm, I'm sure about it. Now, you may be wondering how this extension actually works because it doesn't have a massive database of all of the JavaScript on the web. That would be completely ridiculous and completely unmaintainable. What it does instead is actually works out based on the script whether that script is actually free software. If it's trivial, that one's fairly obvious because it's, you know very short, it's obviously trivial. So there's a couple of ways this extension can work, but the preferred method is by using JavaScript web labels. And there are some really good documentation on the GNU website about making your website play nicely with LibreJS. So the first step is obviously working out what JavaScript you actually have. So any external JavaScript files, any JavaScript embedded in a script tag, any JavaScript in event handlers, any JavaScript embedded dynamically, then you have to work out who actually owns that JavaScript. So scripts that are yours but are free, scripts that are not yours and are not free, and scripts that are yours. Then finally, actually adding the license information. So a JavaScript web label is basically a JavaScript license lookup table saying what each of the scripts on your site actually has as its license. And if you want to see what that looks like in the case of the FSF, here is their web labels table right here. And there is actually a surprising amount of uh, JavaScript on the FSF website. But regardless, if that method isn't going to work, there are other things you can do as well. One of those is just dumping the license information on the page itself. This is going to be when the entire page is using a single license. So in this case, this is GPLv3 or later. But if that's not going to work, you might want to set a license for each of the individual scripts, which you probably will have to do if you're using scripts that are not being made by you. In which case, you basically do the exact same thing, but you just do it more times. There is very likely a lot more free JavaScript out there that isn't actually using a syntax being supported by this actual extension and is being flagged because, you know, it's being treated like it's not free JavaScript. But if you want your website to actually play nicely with this extension, basically just go and make a JavaScript web label because that seems like the easiest method to do so and you'll be good to go. Now, while I wouldn't recommend doing so, if you would like to install LibreJS, it is available in the Firefox extension web store or whatever that thing is called, and that will work perfectly fine, but there is another method, and this is the suggested method to actually install it. So, due to bureaucracy and other nonsense like that with any sort of web store like this, there's always going to be a delay between updates for the installer version from the GNU.org website and the version in the store. So the suggested way to install this is by going to the GNU.org website, downloading the installer, and then doing it like that. This is the way that I've done it, and it's like a two-second process. But if you'd instead rather go and download the source code and do whatever it is you want to do with the source code, that is an option as well. Now, I haven't actually tested this on any Firefox forks. It should work perfectly fine. Uh, I cannot guarantee that's going to be the case, so I would recommend just playing around with it yourself. Now, it's pretty obvious that I don't really care about LibreJS, but that doesn't mean I don't care about JavaScript blockers altogether. And should you actually run LibreJS if you want to go and block JavaScript? Well, here's my question to you. Have you ever just completely considered disabling JavaScript and you want the ability to just pick and choose which JavaScript to run, and you really, really care about only running JavaScript that is free software, and you're happy that some sites might just be broken and you might have to go and fix them, well, in which case, you'll absolutely love this, and you should probably go and install it. But if you want something a bit less extreme, Maybe you're looking for a bit more of a typical content blocker, but if your goal is actually 
blocking JavaScript, but you want a lot more control about how that JavaScript is going to be blocked, I would say go and use something like NoScript instead. I do have a video that I'm going to make on NoScript and its JavaScript blocking features are a lot more customizable and allow you to go and actually control exactly how you want the JavaScript to be blocked, not just it works or it doesn't work. While Libre.js has a heavy focus on free software, NoScript has a focus on trusted content because I know some people don't understand this, but just because it's free software doesn't mean that it's not going to violate your privacy. You can have free software that also violates your privacy. Those are not mutually exclusive concepts. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say today. Let me know your thoughts on Libre.js, on JavaScript, on JavaScript blockers, all of that fun stuff in the comment section down below. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only barrow pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out. I'm going to go make a cup of tea or something. <laughs>